Well, welcome everyone. I know we've got some participants joining us. Welcome everyone to another edition of our uh, OBDC virtual webinar series. And today we've got a very special guest with us, uh, Jimmy Burgess, Chief Growth Officer for Berkshire Hathaway Home Services in Northwest Florida at Santa Rosa Beach. He's joining us here today and he's going to get some great information on us on how to begin to use video in your business. I want to tell you a little bit about OBC. If it's been a few minutes since you've joined us, we want to welcome back to another edition of our, our virtual webinar series. And you know that you can find us always at, at 480 Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Avenue, right at the corner of MLK and Danny Thomas in downtown Memphis, <laughs> our network center. And uh, we want to see you We're open for business and love to see your face as things kind of open up for us again. So, uh, this is a really special uh, webinar. I've asked Jimmy to join us here because I think in our businesses now, video is more important than, than ever before in helping to spread the word, get your message out, and also increase your followers and increase your following as well and your clientele base as well. And so I asked Jimmy to join us here to give you kind of a nuts and bolts guided tour of how to begin to use video in your business. And I think Jimmy, even though he lives in Florida, he's the perfect Memphis type of guy. He's grit and grind, go get, find the details, go figure it out. And he's done that. And he's going to share with you some of his, his uh, uh, tips and techniques and some of the things he's found uh, in, his, in his business, which is real estate. But what he's going to share with you, it will be, will, will transfer to your business uh, easily and effectively. So, uh, again, if you're just joining us here, thanks for being here. Uh, Jimmy, we we'll, would like to uh, get to your specific industry if you can during the hour. So if you would go ahead and type in the chat your industry so we can have that available to us. And again, if you have any question and answers during the hour, feel free to put that in the chat or the Q&A as well. So again, Jimmy, we'd like to welcome you to the Office of Business Diversity and Compliance. Uh, how are you doing today? It's all yours. All right. Thanks, Taylor. Um, and for those of you who don't know, Taylor and I go way back. Um, well, I say we go way back, 11, 12 years now. I mean, um, and uh, so I'm excited to be with you guys. We were actually, Taylor was down here. I live on um, in the 38 area. If you've seen those little stickers around Memphis, you know, we're, we're talking about. But um, and Taylor and I were having lunch when he was in town a couple of weeks ago. and We were talking about this and um, we were just talking about what we've been doing. And he's like, hey, can you spend some time with everybody and share I'm super excited to share this with you because what I'm going to do today, if y'all can't tell by my accent, I am not a professor. Um, this is not going to be on theory. I'm going to talk to you about what I know that I know because it's worked for us and, um, and, and share some ideas on some things that I believe will just cross over to any business. We're going to get to some of the specifics for your business, hopefully towards the end, especially as we get to a QA and a time. But let me just kind of give you an idea of why. Um, I'm so excited about video right now. I was in sales for 24 years. I shifted into this position as the chief growth officer for Berkshire Hathaway Home Services, Beach Properties of Florida down here. We have offices from Destin over to um, now St. George Island, south of Tallahassee. When I started, we had 80 agents um, and now we're pushing up on 240 agents. We've gone from around uh, $17 million in revenue to a little over $40 million of revenue uh, this past year. So we're, we're at a very big growth pace right now. Market's making us look better than we are. I'll take it because I've been on the other side of it. But just to be perfectly frank, what's really been best for us has been our, our ability through video to connect with the people that we are supposed to connect with. What I love about video is, is it gives us the ability, really, we call them OKP, our kind of people. Um, is there are certain people that may see a video that I do and they're like, yeah, that's not that guy's not for me. I mean, it's too much energy or it's the accent, whatever it is. It really acts as a filter. Um, but then there are certain people that it gives them the ability uh, people we're doing business with. Typically, they want to we have to go through the process of them beginning to know us, like us and then trust us to do business with us. Video gives us the ability to really fast track that It gives us that ability. You know, they say that uh, pictures worth a thousand words. Well, video is just frame after frame, so it's millions of words worth of value there um, that we're able to do and we're able to get that. So what we're going to do today is we're going to really go through. I'm going to give you kind of just basics on why video, the type of tools and, and, and everything that you need. We're going to talk about um, some of the things that you can do to improve your videos. We're going to talk about 
how to outsource some of that stuff if you don't want to do it. We're going to talk about some of the ways that you where you should be promoting these types of videos for your specific business that you should be doing. I want to show you some tools that are free that will help you just make sure that you're doing the videos that your clients want and need most so that you're attracting people and you're answering the questions you're getting on a regular basis in a way that draws the people to you. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to start really talking about kind of some of the things that we saw. And basically, I want to give you kind of a little bit of our background story so that you know why I'm so passionate about this. When I first moved into this position, the biggest thing that we wanted to do was is we knew that um, basically, and I believed it my whole life, that you can't give enough out into the business community without it coming back. It comes back every single time. So what we decided to do is, is one of my main jobs is, is recruiting agents. And so what I wanted to do was, is I wanted to basically just act as a person that was providing opportunities for agents to grow, whether they were with us or not. We took and through our organization, identified our target audience. So with video, I think you've got really got to do three things. And when we did this, this is basically what we did. We wanted to take and we wanted to just basically segment our market. So for you, take your market, segment who it is that's your, that's your ideal client. Once you know who that ideal client is. And what we did was, is we said, OK, we really got to a place where who was it we could help the most? It's not with who was it that was going to help our bottom line. Was, who was it we could help the most? Who could we help grow their business the most for us attracting basically talent, basically? Um, for you, it may be who is it that needs to go on my tour? Who is it that um, might come to my spa or wellness center? Or um, who, who is somebody that needs my training? Who is it that you can add the most value to? Once you identify that, now we've, we've segmented the market to that group. Now we want to target that group. How are we going to target that group of people? Where are they? Where are they on YouTube? Are they on social media? Are they wherever it is? We want to identify how we can target to be there. And then the P on the STP formula I'm talking about, segmenting, targeting, and then positioning. How are we going to position ourselves in a way that we become the resource before they even need us to where that when the time comes for them to do business with someone like you, you're the first person that's top of mind. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to really go into that today. For us, when we identified who that was, for us, it was someone that was basically that had been in this real estate business for a little while, somebody that had some successes, um, that had done between four and $10 million worth of production. And we had a track record once we started of putting a system in place training in place to help those folks that wanted to, where we had over 80% of those agents that joined us in that niche that we can add the most value to, they doubled their business within 14 months. So once we got that, we really started targeting that group. We built an email list um, of those folks. A couple things, if you're looking for your ideal client, listen, I don't want to spam anybody. You don't want to spam anyone. Um, but just adding value, I've never had anybody complain when I just, all I did was add value and I wasn't asking them for anything. We went and, and garnered about 3,000 emails of those ideal people that we had in Northwest Florida that were agents and began just on every Tuesday, we send out our Tuesday tips, basically. Um, and it is an email that goes to them. And I'm going to just give you some of this wording and then I'm going to get to the actual video stuff because I think consistency when you're messaging and you're putting this out in front of your ideal client, what I found is, is that repetition builds your reputation. So it's, it's critical to be consistent. So literally every Tuesday, they know they're going to get an email from us. And, and what we did was, is it was just training them without them paying us for it, without asking them for anything. We just would send it. It would be like in our business, seven ways to generate listings. They would just, we would do the video. I'd give them seven ways that they could generate business. And then in the body of the email, not in the video, I would simply say, hey, I hope you're happy where you are. But if you're thinking about making a change, we'd love to talk to you about how we help our help these help agents in our company build the business or dreams. Whatever it is, messaging wise, like we were talking about positioning you for your ideal client. We want to build that email list that we can start distributing some of these videos. And we're going to really dive into the different social medias and the different places to park these um, in just a minute. But in reality, it starts with who's your ideal client? What's their biggest pain point? How can you answer those things so that you have that capability to really add value to that group. I want to start with what you need. Here, here's the beauty of this. When I, you know, when I first started, actually, when I first started knowing Taylor, I, I was doing video back in 2011 and 12. And I had to have these flip phone, these flip camera things that I would have to set up. And then I had to take them and I had to do all this stuff. Here's all you need. Literally, everything you need is on this iPhone. The, the camera that is on that iPhone right now is more powerful than anything we had literally on the market two years ago, as far as cameras, almost. Um, the audio is almost better. It has the iPhone has the anti where it won't be moving around. Everything you need to start with is right on that iPhone. Now, 
There may be a time where you go and you expand. But literally, as far as I'm going to talk about cameras, lighting, I'm going to talk about your audio and your editing on the camera side. This is what we started with. And that's still to this day. What we do a lot of our stuff with is we'll have a second camera. We'll set two of these up where we got multiple angles when we're doing our editing. But literally, all you need is that. To be perfectly frank, most people now, if it's over polished, um, it turns them off. They really want something that's genuine, that's authentic, that they can really get to know you. Um, so start with your iPhone. It has everything you need as far as a camera. Now, when you get to that point, we spend now, because we've been doing this three years and we've seen this amount of growth and we know that this is valuable, whether it be for training for our agents, whether it be for recruiting or whether it be for just drawing our natural clients to our agents. We've then gone and invested in a number of different things. I mean, you can get a really solid camera. Like the camera we use with the lenses that we use is around $2,500. Um, as I said, we did not start there. That's where we ended up moving to. So that's your camera. That's what you can do. Literally just start with this. Um, some of the most effective things we've done also, if you're looking for a camera, um, is you can literally do what we're doing right now. Zoom party of one. You can literally set this thing up where you set up a meeting on Zoom. doesn't cost you anything. You record that meeting with you just talking to the screen, and that can be your video. Great for you communicating with some of your clients that are out there also, or if you're explaining some type of a contract or you're talking about something that's going on. This is a great way to start also is just simply using what we've already got. You know, I don't know how my audio is coming through um, on this, but it's adequate for sure. Um, it actually is good enough for sure to start with. And I promise you, if the value of your content and you're answering questions and you're taking and relieving some pain for people, they're not going to argue with you if you're doing it on Zoom or you've got a $2,500 camera. It doesn't matter to them. They just want their answers um, to their problems. Now let's move on to lighting because literally, um, I'll give you an idea. When we first started, it was pretty simple. All we want to do is have a light in our face. You don't want shadows. So you want to make sure that if you're I was shooting inside, I was facing a window where I had natural light coming into my, into my face. If I was outside, I didn't want to have the sun behind me. I wanted it in front of me because I wanted to make sure um, that I had that natural lighting coming into us and we weren't working from a place of shadows and some of those things. Um, lighting is pretty basic. It's pretty much just getting it in. Now, once you get to that point, like I'll show you kind of right now, like literally this right here is a white box light that I've got in my office. You can get a pair of those on um, Amazon for literally $25 to $50. Um, it does a ton of soft box lighting there. Um, also, one thing that's really cheap and inexpensive, especially if you're going to do a lot of stuff on your, on your cell phone, is you go to Amazon and you can look up selfie ring light. And what it does is, is there'll be a selfie ring for iPhones that will actually just slide over, that clips on and slides over this. You'll always have basically light in your face there. It also slides right over your laptop, over the camera. So it's open in the middle there and it gives you that lighting and it has some adjustables and it's like $15. Then the next step is to get a, a they call them selfie ring lights. This is what all the, um, you see with everybody that's on whether it be on any of these social media channels, the kids are, um, you know, with, with TikTok, they're using a lot of this. It is a light that is basically on a tripod that comes up. It's a bigger ring light. The camera sits right in the middle of it. So you've always got light in your face. That's an alternative as well. Those are in the 70 to $80 range. Lighting is critical. Um, and then now let's get to the audio because to be perfectly frank, if the audio is bad, that is, um, it's a deal killer in most cases. Your iPhone will be good, but make sure you're not in a windy place. Make sure if you're shooting outside, you're not in wind. Um, one of the things that we did that's pretty easy to do also, if you're going to be shooting with your iPhone, you can buy for $15 to $20 an eight-foot cord that basically plugs into your iPhone, and it's a lav mic. So if you're setting up six to eight feet away, you can have that lav mic right here, feeds direct audio in there, and I got to tell you, it's really, really professional sounding. Um, we then moved, once we moved from that, these are kind of the steps. We started with just the iPhone. Then we moved up to uh, where we were doing, actually, we were utilizing that lav mic with the iPhone. And then we moved up to our camera and we moved to a, um, a wireless mic set. It runs around $150 to $170. Listen, Amazon will show you everything you know, need to know as far as that goes on by the reviews. 
And basically, we had a set of two because we were doing some interviews, which I'm going to talk to you about in just a minute. And they just simply sat in here and they connected on to the camera and gave us that capability. Um, the last thing that we did because we wanted studio quality on some of the interviews we were doing and some of the things we were doing is we went out and bought a boom mic. If you're not familiar with that, it's basically there's a tripod. This mic is like a mic that sits on the end. You can stretch this thing out where it'll get them out and it's above you. Picks up the audio in an amazing way. Makes for very professional sounding video. Um, audio um, that setup runs us around five hundred dollars so again this just giving you some options there you don't i would not start with the top end i would start with some of the things that you're actually going to be able to use right out of the gate um, to get yourself up to speed um, now on the editing side let me give you a couple of tips on the editing one of the things is is if you're shorting shooting short videos right on your iphone it has the ability where you can clip on the front and the back. So if you're editing right there, you just simply take that into that video and you just click the edit and it will give you that ability to clip some of those things right on there. Another great app um, that is very inexpensive is Videolicious. Now, Videolicious is an app that's on your phone. When you shoot with your phone, it'll give you the ability to take and shoot multiple things where you connect them. It fades between those. It gives you the ability to add some, um, some words and some text on there. It also gives you the ability to have some background music. Um, that's a very inexpensive app. As I remember, it's somewhere in the range of about five to $10 a month. But I'll tell you, if you're just starting out, it's a great one to start with and give you that cap of, um, uh, capability. Video Licious. And if you want me, I, listen, um, kind of my, I, if I need to spell that, I'm going to be in trouble. But uh, I, I'm going to try this. V I D E O L I C I O U S. Video Licious. I feel like I just want to spell it there or something. But um, basically, if you just, if you look that up, um, Carolyn, hopefully you, you'll be able to find that. It is, um, it's a great tool. It's a great app. I use that forever on my phone where I was out, out and about. Um, so if I was just going by someone or I was checking with a client, this is a perfect opportunity to just sit there. Like if you're driving by a client's business, say, hey, I was driving by, I just saw you. I was out here in front of your place, just thinking about you. I hope you guys are doing well. Send them a text. It doesn't have to be complicated. Um, in my business, it was, hey, I was just driving in the neighborhood, saw, just ran by your house, just saw that you weren't there, just want to let you know I was thinking about you. Just may, basically having that personalized communication with those folks. As far as stepping it up from Videolicious, I'm going to start with the Mac. I'm going to go to, um, to Apple products. Also, talk about some of those that are out there. For me, I started with a PC. I used Camtasia. Um, it has been a while since I bought that, but it ran me around $325, I think, back then. And it was a lifetime access. I'm still using it to, to this day when I wanted. Gave me, I mean, I'm just telling y'all, if, if I could do it, I promise you, you can. It's got some great tools as far as what, um, how to use it. Um, we live in an amazing age where you can go to YouTube and you're like, hey, show me um, how to use Camtasia and it'll show you everything you need to know. Camtasia is the one that I use. Again, gave me background music, gave me the ability to splice things together, gave me the ability to do text in there, gave me some options on um, fading text in and fading text out. It just it has a ton of options there. Um, and you can go as deep as you want with that. Um, literally, it can give you everything you need. If you're looking at your Mac. Um, iMovie is tremendous and it's free um, for any of the Mac products. iMovie gives you that really that capability to do everything that I was just talking about with Camtasia um, and then some probably. And it's a great place to start if you're using a Mac. Now, if you're getting this to the now, I'm going to talk about next level because this is where we got to and basically where we have now three videographers on staff. We didn't start that way. I started with my iPhone, but now this is because of the value it's added to our business. That's where we're at. Um, so now with them, what they're using, they're actually using Adobe Premiere um, as the editing tool. It has the, it, I mean, I don't even understand how everything it has, to be perfectly frank, but it's the best on the market. So if you're getting to a place where you want best of breed, um, for us at least, it's been Adobe Premiere um, that's been out there on an e editing side. Um, so let's talk and let's shift a little bit. Um, about kind of what type of video should you make? And then we're going to get into some of these others. I, let me let me say this too. I'm going to shift around some on some of this. So I'm going to share my screen real quick and just show you some of this stuff just to kind of get you an idea of kind of where you may be able to find some tools. You can find anything you want on YouTube right now. I'm going to just show you on my channel, for instance, this is a YouTube channel. If you just go to YouTube and you just punch in Jimmy Burgess, it'll come up here. 
This, this will tell you that this was a video with real estate tech tools right here um, that you should have. Um, a lot of I go into a lot of detail with some of these a little more here on that. Um, and so if you want more details, you can find that. Also, here's 20 uh, video creation tools for real estate agents. Again, those just cross over. So if you pull up mine, you should be able to get some additional details there. But again, um, you can literally find everything you know need on, on YouTube. So if you're just curious, um, that's that next level of taking it and finding exactly what works best for you or any of these products I've mentioned, you can get tutorials on all those. So let's talk about what video you should be shooting, because I think what happens a lot of times, listen, we're all in the sales business. Our businesses um, don't um, make it if we don't have somehow attracting business to us. One of the things that I always say is, is that top producers or any top businesses attract business. They don't chase it. And so what we utilize video for is, is to attract the right people. We talked about now we've gotten to a place where we've segmented that market, that STP. We've targeted our certain people. Now we want to basically come to a place where we're, we're positioning ourselves with the information they want in a way that's helpful to them. So let's think about this. I would start with what are the most commonly asked questions? What is it that most people um, ask you about? So I'm going to use um, I'm going to use some of this that we've already talked about. I know we've got I think we've got some people on here that are um, I know that um, I believe you know, the, the touring business. So what are some of those things? You know, a, a great one would be something along the lines of like five places you have to see while you're in Memphis, Tennessee. Um, I promise you the people that are out there, they're searching for that kind of stuff. Put you right in the position and you just go through it and say, you know, hey, I'm here with whatever touring company. I'm going to give you five places you definitely need to see while you're in Memphis. And by the way, at the end, I'm going to give you a little contact information on our tours if you're interested in having someone show you around. Something along those lines. We're not hammering them with a sales message. Then we're going straight into, you should see this. You should see that. That's the way we do some of this. Insurance business. I'm going to use this example if we have somebody on here from the insurance business. It's things that people are looking for right now. Should I buy term life insurance or whole life? I'm just using that as an example. What's the difference between different types of insurance? People are searching that. You have to understand, I'm going to use YouTube specifically right now. Google is the number one search engine in the world. Number two search engine in the world right now is YouTube. Google bought YouTube. So what's happening now is, is that videos, because it keeps people on the site longer, because they can run ads on the side longer, Google is promoting that. If you go to Google right now and you Google something, you're going to have the ads up top. Then you're going to get to those first couple of things. And then they're going to have five videos right there for you to go directing you to YouTube. The reason why is because the longer people are watching that, they can keep them there. If they Google a search and it says, five things to do, and it's a blog post from someone, that takes them off of Google and onto that other person's site. They want them staying on there. So going forward, we know that video is going to become more and more um, uh, the norm. Facebook came out and said that they want 85 to 90 percent of their content in 2022 to be on video. The same reason, the longer that somebody's playing that video on, on Facebook, the longer those ads are sitting there, the more revenue they're generating for their company. So not only are we see more video now, it's only accelerating. We're at a place where it's only accelerating. So let's talk about some of these types of videos. I'm going to give you a ton of different ideas. When we get to the end, if you've got some specific on your business, I'll be glad to share that because um, this is something I've done for a couple of other businesses as well. I'm going to start with frequently asked questions. What are the most frequently asked questions you have? And how could you do that in a way that you answer that question in a video format where you Basically, you gave the ability for people to get to know, like, and trust you better. You gave them a solid answer that they wanted, but they may not be in a place where they're ready to talk to someone, and it keeps you top of mind. So I'm going to use this, for example. Let's just use, like, um, uh, I'm going to use the, um, the train. If there's somebody on here that's in the training business, if you're a personal trainer, I'm going to just use that example. You know, some of, something like that may be, you know, five best exercises to flatten your stomach. I'm just using that. Or whatever it is, we're going to use these to start attracting those right people. We're going to go through some of those. What is the most common question you have? Whatever it is for your business, that's one that I would start with. Also, I would say interviewing your, if you're not comfortable on camera yet, and I'll tell you, most people aren't when they start. I mean, if you are, that's a, it's, that's awesome. But most people, it takes reps to get comfortable on camera. I would start by interviewing some of your service providers, you don't even have to be on camera. You could literally have your iPhone on a tripod facing them and then have it where basically while it's facing them, you're standing behind the camera and you ask them the questions. 
you're highlighting, you're making them the hero. But what happens is by you sharing that and you tagging them on social media, for instance, and you're asking, so let's say I'm going to use our real estate business, um, but it can be a, a business that goes in line with yours. Let's say that I interview a mortgage broker about the five things that people need to know before they buy their first house or five things they need to make sure they have under under control before they uh, to, to drive their credit higher, whatever it is. I'm standing behind the camera and I'm interviewing this agent. The second that I put that up on theirs uh, on and I share that and I tag them, odds are they're going to reshare it and you begin to get some cross pollination there. So interviewing service providers, interviewing places like I love doing where it's the hero of the week, highlighting someone there. We are in such need. And, and I know we're not talking specifically about your business, but ultimately there's no separation here. You've got to provide content where people know, like, and trust you. So it can't always be where you're just hammering them, asking them if they need a term life policy, for instance. You have to come from a place where you're adding value to their lives. I did a lot of things where we would go in and we would do our favorite restaurants. We call them favorite Fridays. And we would go in and we would just highlight the favorite restaurant. We would be sitting in the restaurant and have the food that I ordered. I'd have the um, owner of the restaurant sitting across from us. And I'd say, hey, today I'm here with so-and-so who's the owner of Taylor and mine's favorite place down here, Seagrove Village Market, for instance. And today I'm eating what I believe they will serve in heaven, which is this grouper po' boy that I've been enjoying since I was 11 years old. And now I want to ask you a couple of questions about how long have you owned the restaurant? What are some of the things that people typically ask you about what you serve here? Tell us a little bit of the history of the business. Going through and making them the hero, sharing that information about them. Meanwhile, you're on camera. I promise you, you're going to get some cross-pollination. And it builds a referral base. We're all in this together, especially right now coming on the backside of this. The more you can do to align yourself with some of the best restaurants, align yourself with some of the best service providers, doing that thing, all of a sudden now, not only did the video add value to your clients, you in many cases are going to add people to your social media that didn't know you of you before You're all, because of the cross-pollination. You're also going to potentially have a referral partner that if somebody comes in that restaurant and they're like, hey, we're just moving to this area. Anybody in particular I should talk to, you're going to be top of mind because you gave their business value. They're going to want to reciprocate uh, back to you. I would do some examples of a day in the life of whatever that is, some of your work. So I've done them where I will just sit the camera, just like what I'm doing right now and just say, hey, I was just sitting here. I actually had someone that was thinking about selling their home. And the question they asked me was, should I sell now or should I wait until the fall because this market keeps going up? And I would just simply answer that question. And then I utilize that. It's very quick. It's very simple. You can do those types of things. What are some of those things where you're documenting your day? Hey, I was just out here and check out this amazing house and these views of the Gulf that I'm looking at right now. You know, those types of little quick pop videos where you're documenting your day, utilizing some of the things with stories on Instagram, where you're utilizing it on Facebook or whatever it is, that gives them a better opportunity to understand who you are and make sure that you're a good fit for them. And I promise it's going to keep you top of mind. Also, um, I like to do, um, if you're in a business that has, in, in any business has this, preventative maintenance. So if you're a personal trainer, you know, what are five foods that you need to stay away from? Whatever that looks like. If you're in the insurance business, hey, here's three things you need to make sure you've got taken care of when it comes to securing your family's future through insurance. Whatever it is, talk about some of those things, those preventative maintenance things. For us, it's like, hey, if you're getting ready to sell your house, make sure the front door is 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 painted and fresh and that you've got a fresh new door handle on there because it's the first thing people touch and see when they come into your house. You want to make that first impression. Just little things like that. Talk about some of your favorite places, highlighting a park in your area, highlighting a, um, a um, something that is an activity that's in your area, highlighting whatever it is. It doesn't have to have anything to do with your business, but when you highlight those places, make sure that you're tagging those folks or that location so that all of a sudden now you begin to get people that are searching that or that are following those folks that begin to come in and begin to follow you. So let's talk about some of the things on the is that gives you a few ideas. We'll go into some specifics maybe in just a minute, but um, really one of the best things for those of you that have any employees, I will tell you that we've done is we started highlighting employees. 
So we actually go in and we highlight one of our employees. We just say, hey, today we get the chance to um, introduce you to one of our um, one of our most productive team members, Katie. Katie comes from here. Katie does this job. She's been with us for three years. We're so thankful to have her. And um, if you get if you're in the office, make sure you let Katie know how much you appreciate um, what she does and helps us. In our, and we, and we want to make sure we publicly do that as well. You see, when you highlight those people, it does two things. It drives basically the ability for people to see you doing something nice for somebody. Um, and as business owners, we should be doing that anyway, to be perfectly frank. It just gives us the ability. Um, my pastor says it this way. He says that if you don't give honor publicly, it's, you're not giving full honor. So honor some of your employees. Document some of what they do. Share some of the things. If you If you had a, in our business, like if we had a transaction that went through, we're going to tell the story of that buyer. We're going to tell the story of our clients. We're going to make them the hero. When you do those things, you'll start having some of those as well. Now, let me go through and talk to you a little bit about a couple of tools that we utilize as far as really making this work well. One of my favorite tools of all time is an email app where you can email video videos to people called BombBomb. It's B-O-M-B. B-O-M-B dot com. It personalizes emails and it has this little like embeds it into the email. So that when somebody gets that email, the first thing they see is they see this GIF or GIF or whatever you want to call it, where it's like three to five seconds. One of the best ways to engage with people through video is this personal, just like this. So if this were an email, and I'm going to use this as an example, I'm going to use Taylor as an example. If this were an email I was sending to Taylor, I would literally start by having this where I would have something like this. I'm going to do this real rough where I would have this where it would say Taylor. If this were the email, I press record, I would have this and I would shake it like this where it says Taylor. I'll promise you if Taylor gets that email from me, he can't help but push play on that where I get to talk to him. Personalizes that email. And then it's like, hey, Taylor, Jimmy Burgess from Berkshire Hathaway, just checking in with you. Wanted to make sure that you're getting all the information you need. Just know I'm here if I can be a resource in any way. Listen, I appreciate um, the opportunity to earn your business and I'll talk to you soon. You send those types of emails. You follow up with your clients. It also gives you the way. We've all got some of those clients that we're like, oh, I have to call them. It's going to be a 30-minute call. This takes care of some of that. So, for instance, I'm going to use the insurance business. Let's say that you have someone that you're getting ready and you've gotten the policy in place. And they're going to have you 50 questions or they're going to drive you crazy because they just want to talk and talk and talk. I'm using that as an example. Basically, let's say Taylor was that client. Not that Taylor's that client, but you know what I'm saying. Taylor, and I start the video. It starts with that three second gift. And then I say, hey, Taylor, it's Jimmy Burgess. Just want to let you know your policy is in full effect. I'm emailing in this email a copy of your executed, all the executed documents. If you have any questions, feel free to email me back. Give me a call or you can text me at. Listen, I really appreciate the opportunity to earn your business. And by the way, if you know of anybody else that I can help, please let me know. I'd love, just know I'll treat them like family and I appreciate your business. You send that email out. It's more personalized. It saves time. It gives you the ability really to check in on people in a way that you can do a lot of those. I used to do that where I would have my 10 best referral partners, for instance, or my 10 best clients. I did it where I did a top, next 10 list where I had 10 referral partners, 10 of my next listings, 10 of my next buyers. I kept it right in front of me. And I tried to at least once a week send them a personalized message. And it may simply be as simple as Hey, I was just um, I'm driving around, drove by your house the other day. Just wanted to let you know I was thinking about you. Listen, just know I'm here if I can do anything for you. Hope you and the family are doing well, and I'll talk to you soon. That's a quick email, but it's personalized. It keeps you top of mind. It keeps you where you're going to be receiving those. So Bomb Bomb is that tool. Can't recommend that enough. To be perfectly frank, I think I've done 1,950 videos since I got that. There are email videos. I use it also if some of you have any type of, like for me, I want to continue to feel small as we continue to grow big. So when we're sitting here with in excess of a um, you know, billion and a half dollars worth of sales, 240 agents, on Fridays every week, I record a video to that group and say, hey, just want to celebrate some successes, let you know what opportunities we have as a company this next week. We go through and I read and call out everybody that had a success, something that went under contract, something that came on the market, something that closed, whatever it is for you. Who is it that is a vendor of yours that you can keep in touch with? throughout a process? Who is it that maybe is an employee? Who is it that maybe is the ideal referral partner that you can keep in touch with? Bomb Bomb is a great tool. Doesn't have to be complicated. You just record your screen and you can go through it that way. Now, let me go through and let me just tell you some of these things where we should be putting these videos. And the answer to that is every single place you can think of. So I'm going to talk about social media specifically, okay? Here's a little pro tip. If you're loading these videos and you're going to Facebook, I'm going to use Facebook for example. 
The last thing Facebook wants people to do is to click on a link and leave their site because they don't get ad dollars, ad revenue. So, it's, so take the raw video. Instead of using a YouTube link or a Vimeo link or something where you're making people click the link and go off site, upload the video directly to Facebook. And the reason why you want to do this is, is it keeps the people on Facebook and the traffic and organic traffic you'll receive from Facebook by doing that will be dramatically different than if you put a YouTube link in there. Make sure you're doing it directly there. Now, I got to tell you, there are certain times where I'm just trying to drive people to YouTube and I'd rather have a smaller audience going to that video on YouTube to help build that portion of the business. So you got to make the decision on when it's best for you. But in just about every situation, you have that ability and it's going to get more run. Um, I'm going to talk about Facebook specifically. Facebook has become a pay to play um, platform for the most part. I would encourage you to mix some of your business in on your personal page. And I will say this, my engagement on my personal page is dramatically higher than it is on my business page. So make sure you're having something there where you're promoting some of your business or you're sharing something that's going on with your business on your personal page as well. You're really going to have difficulty on a business page getting any traffic right now unless you pay for it on Facebook. If you've got a huge group, that's great. Adding some and, and, and moving some of these where you're promoting these back to your group, that's tremendous. You're going to get a big run there because there are eyes on Facebook, obviously. But if you're at a place where you're wanting to get the most bang for your buck, really organic traffic is going to come on your personal more than it is on your business page. Let's go over to Instagram. Instagram is great. Um, in reality, it's perfect for photos and videos, especially short clip stuff. This is really great. Gets you a ton of engagement. Your story gives you the ability really to share stuff that will be going away in 24 hours. Um, so I can't encourage you enough to build on Instagram. I'm going to tell you, though, business, especially those of you that are doing business with business people or people that are coming from specific areas um, that you can target. LinkedIn has been tremendous. Um, there, think about it this way. You've got less than, I believe it's less than a million people doing two pieces of content on LinkedIn per week. You've got over 40 million users. I believe that number's correct. That's off the top of my head, so it may be wrong, maybe extremely low, um, actually. But think about this. They don't have enough content. So when you post something organically on um, LinkedIn, it's going to do dramatically higher. We're seeing huge results on LinkedIn. I want to tell you, too. Don't sleep on TikTok. I'm doing an interview on Friday with an agent out of Atlanta who is generated as a real estate agent, $108,000 in commissions directly from TikTok this year. She's doing it dramatically different. Um, and she said she's never been called Karen so much in her life, but she's got thick skin. She can handle it. But if you're wondering about that, I would definitely look into TikTok, do it a little different. It's more of an entertainment platform, short, quick pops. But I'm telling you right now, the amount of activity you get over there is tremendous as far as organic traffic. Um, and if you're looking for that, Glenda Baker is her name. It's two ends, Glenda Baker. Um, and if you look her up, you can find her on TikTok. You can see what she's doing with real estate. It's tremendous and get a better idea of some business ideas on how to highlight your business over there. Um, that is just killing for her right now. Um, last but not least, I'm going to go into YouTube because, um, again, what we're talking about earlier, YouTube is the number one search engine. Well, let me circle back real quick because don't get overwhelmed with all this. One of the best things that we did is, is that we ended up going out and hiring interns to come in. We found college um, um, young men and women that were looking for an internship. Um, for us with the Berkshire Hathaway name, it was tremendous. They wanted it on their resume. Um, they came in, they did two months with us. They brought some renewed energy. They brought some renewed um, ideas. Um, they brought the intelligence on how to do that. We specifically looked for videographers and photographers on that. Um, and they really helped us take our game to the next level. We've hired two of those out of the four that we've had so far as full-time employees. So I got to tell you, it's a great breeding ground. If you don't want to go the intern route, local churches have people that are doing videography in a number of cases. And those are folks that a lot of times are younger folks that you can get at a reduced price from going out and getting a full blown videographer when you're first starting. Another great place is I got to tell you every single high school in America right now, especially as they're coming back, these kids have been holed up in a lot of cases has a video person that videos their morning show for the high school. Uh, these are great folks to come in. They're looking to do a little more, you can get them for a relatively inexpensive cost. 
give them an idea of what you want. Um, one of the things I would say is, is if you're curious about how to do in your business, I'm going to use insurance, for instance, go on YouTube and search insurance agent um, in whatever another town. Go in there and search insurance um, questions and see who pops up and see how they're doing theirs. Um, once you see that, it's going to make a big difference on how you do this. Now, YouTube, I got to tell you, if you're going to take the time to earn, e learn anything right now, learn how to utilize YouTube as the number two search engine and being escalated at a pace that we've never seen before with the amount of search that's done over there. People are going to YouTube for answers. So if you're in positioning yourself, Facebook, a lot of people are scrolling and the ads come up or Facebook, they're scrolling. They're like, oh, that's kind of interesting. YouTube, we can literally get literally right up in their kitchen with them as far as what they're looking for and do that. So I'm going to share my screen here real quick because I want to show you a couple of tools and techniques that we're using um, to really do this. And um, let me just talk about a couple of tools. Let me go over here first. So I'm going to show you exactly a couple of tools. Let me move me over here. I'm going to use this as the search term. And you can kind of see a lot of mine is obviously real estate related. These, this kind of shows you what you're looking for. This is a program called Keywords Everywhere. And what it does is it tells me exactly how many times the, a certain search term is searched so that I have an idea of how much and is this something that people are interested in, especially in your area. Now, I'm going to use this. This is something we would do. Moving to Memphis would be something that we would possibly use if I were looking at this. This tells me a couple of things. 390 people a month are searching for that term. I will say this. I'm not looking for the terms that are going to have 50,000 searches. I want to get super niche. I'd rather have 390 people that are searching for one term that is exactly my ideal client than I would to have 10,000 that maybe some of them are. So utilize this tool. This other por portion tells you cost per click. This is how much people are paying for somebody that will click on theirs. I don't really use that, so it doesn't apply. But if you do any cost per click or you do any of the um, advertising through Google or through YouTube, that gives you a good idea on what that search and what you would be paying for that. This tells you about the amount of competition. There's not a lot of competition here, which is great. Now, let me show you another real life example. I want to use this as an example. Let me just think about this. Um, if I wanted to do, for instance, somebody that was looking for um, uh, best restaurant in, you know, let me help and peck it on this, in Memphis. I'm going to just pull this up. You can see 390 views on best restaurants in Memphis. If I click this, it's going to show me who's on there. Now, here's the second tool that I utilize. You've got the keywords everywhere search up here telling you what those look like. You can see the people that are doing this and what these look like. Three months ago, this has had 3,600 views. So we have the ability to move up to the top very quickly. Um, and so I'm going to give you an idea. This this tube buddy, listen, keywords everywhere runs me, I think, $10 for like every three to four months. Tube buddy has a free option. And then it also has an option where you can upgrade. And I think I pay $10 a month. The reason why I like the upgrade is it gives me a lot more insights on what's going on. This is what it does. Keywords. Uh, this is tube buddy. It shows me that keyword search right there. Tells me what the search volume is, if it's higher, if it's poor. It doesn't, doesn't bother me if it's poor, if I can be and the competition's low. Um, and it tells me weighted. This is a pretty good title. If I was going to do this, then I've got about a 50% chance that I'm going to be on the first page of search, potentially, depending on what I do from there. But now there's certain little things we can do that will up that. I'm, gonna just, I'm hoping this works. Let me try, try this. Um, Memphis, Tennessee. Um, so if I do this, now you see we've gone to 6,600. Now look at this. This will tell me what this goes from. That was at 50% where I could have a really good idea. Now I've moved up to excellent. So this is the title. This helps me with my titling. The better we title this, the more we get in line with what people are searching for, the more likely that we're going to move to the top of the search on these, okay? Because that's the ideal spot to be in. Now, a couple of things that TubeBuddy does also, because it really breaks down to positioning these things and the best way you could do that is really to come in and you want to have your title correct. You want to have your thumbnail, which I'm going to talk to in just a minute, which is basically this picture with the words on it. And then you need to have tags, which these are the search terms. And then you have your description. So I'm going to go into mine and just I think I can show you some of these on mine. So I'm going to use this as an example. OK, I'm just going to use this one as an example. Um, and when I'm in here, I've put in basically what I did is you can see this. I went in and I did 
basically the description with a lot of different search terms, creative real estate marketing ideas. That's a search term that someone may use. What to send to real estate farms. I like to utilize it this way where I'm starting off the title needs to match the first sentence. That shows continuity. Even when you're uploading your thumbnail, you want that continuity. Because what they're doing with the YouTube algorithm is, is if they know exactly what this is about, which they look for your title, your first sentence, and then the tags, that helps YouTube suggest this to other people or recommend it to other people, which gets you more organic traffic. Here's the beauty of this and what I wanted to really show you is this is something that I utilize in this. If you come down here and again, this is TubeBuddy and I click on keyword search. If I had uploaded this, this is telling me the best tags that are 94% that's going to help me move to the top of search. 93% will help me move to the top of search and that. They're, all of these. Tagging this thing correctly gives us that ability. I want to go back and show you another example. I'm going to show you this example because we just tested this literally to see if we could do it with locations. Many of you are in location businesses or you're there. I took this Majestic Sun Condos. Now listen, you don't have to go as detailed as we did. But basically what I did is... I'm, you're not going to be able to hear this, I don't think, but you can see I just did the intro here. I came in and I did a quick intro where I talked about the condos. Then we shot the video details to the back of this. Here's the beauty of this. I had this recorded. I just literally recorded the audio, read it on my script, and then we did the video on the back of that. Then I did a search term on the back, basically where I drove them to a website. I went and bought a detailed portion or that search. So for instance, this is Majestic Sun Condos for Sale. That search term, I bought in GoDaddy for $10. I point it to my website for the search term for that. Now I'm driving traffic to there that's very particular. Now, the beauty of this is this gave us the ability to literally move up in search. I'm going to go over here and show you this. We did this three months ago for this. And this is, I'm going to show you the power of this. I'm not looking for 100,000 views. I'm wanting the right people. So if I pull up Majestic Sun Condos um, for sale, I'll just, I'll just do that. I'm, I'm Miramar Beach. Um, so I'm just going to use that. So these are Majestic Sun Condos, Miramar Beach. If you scroll down here, look, we're number one. We've had 3,500 views in five months on this. So there is power in all of this. I would just encourage you to make sure that you're doing those things. The thumbnail portion and I want to show you this right here. You can go and use a tool like Canva and basically give you the ability to take a picture and it will have the templates already in there for YouTube thumbnails. If you go in there to YouTube thumbnails, it's going to give you a bunch of different options. Utilize those. Make sure that those are striking. You've got your description correct. You've got your thumbnail correct. You've got your targeting with your tags correct. And you got your title correct. You're going to get some success over there on YouTube. Now, what I want to do, um, Taylor, if you can come back on with me. Um, I have been, and Loom is great also, Carol, and Loom is what I used before I got into BombBomb, and that is a great tool also um, if you're looking to do emails with video as well. So, Taylor, um, I just want to see if there's any questions anybody has, if they want to type them in, or what we can do to answer specific on some of these businesses. I'm, I feel like I'm, I feel like I've talked for now 49, 40 something minutes. I, I need to get some water anyway, but just see if there's anybody that has specific questions. Think you're on mute also, Taylor. I'm muted here. Okay, if you do have questions, go ahead and type them in the chat. Uh, and Jimmy, we've we got about 10 minutes left and we'll be happy to kind of address some of those things. You have covered a lot of information, which is unbelievably awesome and useful. And I think we, we, we probably need to, you know, just decipher this a little bit and just to take it in and begin to, 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 work, it, to work it out. So for those of us that are saying, oh my gosh, you know, I've got to, I've got to start doing some videos here. Take us through maybe the first couple of steps, of just of just getting started. I know you've kind of covered a lot of that, but kind of settle us down a little bit and, and help us take the first step here. Yeah, and um, Taylor, I'm going to come to that. I want to answer this question real quick from John. Um, where you find their YouTube keyword search is, go to keywordseverywhere.com. It's an app that actually comes into your browser. So anytime then once you tie that into your browser, anytime you come on YouTube, I mean, it's like, I think I paid $10 and you get like a hundred thousand search terms or something. So I, I can't remember, I think it's probably been six months since I paid another $10. 
But once you type, once you sign up and pay the ten dollars for that, it automatically connects it to your YouTube, and um, that gives you the ability to have that search. It'll be right in there. Okay. Um, if that doesn't answer it, John, just let me know. Um, but Taylor, I, I would say this: the first place to start. I liked starting with emails. You know what Carol's talking about with starting with Loom and emails, bomb bomb and emails. I think that's great. Um, it gives you the ability you can share your screen, or you can just do what we're doing right here, where you can just talk to people. Um, one tip I would say is, is when you're doing that, make sure like right now, like I'm looking at Taylor right now. That's uncomfortable if I send somebody an email and I'm looking at myself because it's not direct eye to eye contact. But if I just simply go up to that little dot up there and I start looking into it, I'm talking to them directly eye to eye. And that makes a huge difference when you're doing this. So make sure you're doing those. I would start with video emails. Then I would go to my frequently asked questions and I would just start doing it that way. Um, I know one, um, I'm going to use the real estate business as an example. Um, Tuesday tips can go in any business. So it doesn't matter what you're in, start doing a Tuesday tip. And that could be something simply along the lines of, um, hey, Tuesday's tip today is, is the question I get a lot of times is, should I buy term life insurance or whole life insurance? Or the, the t today's Tuesday tip is, is that if you're going to tour Memphis in the summer, do it early in the morning before the humidity shows up. You know what I mean? Something like that, you know, or, hey, the best times to, to view this or to see this park would be this. Make sure just whatever it is that you can do, just do a Tuesday tip. And then at the end, just simply do like, I hope this is helpful. You can look for every Tuesday. I'll be dropping another tip. You can do this on your social media. You can do it wherever you want. And all of a sudden, you're going to have this bank of these Tuesday tips. I'll, I'll share with everybody. Um, the bottom line is, is just get started. I'm going to tell you right now, the first ones are going to be awkward. Um, you should see, if you go to my YouTube channel, you go back to the first videos. First of all, I can't believe I just told you that because it's so embarrassing you know, to see what that looks like. You know what I mean? Um, but you just, you just got to know. I told Taylor when I came on here, I just knew this was what I needed to do. And um, it took for four months. I got no response, zero response. I was like, am I doing the right thing? What's going on? But you got to understand because I did one every week, every Tuesday, and I did it for four months, I'm 16, 17 in all of a sudden now, First off, I start getting a little better, more comfortable on camera. Secondly, I start getting a little bit of feedback where I know where, okay, well, they responded to this. I'm going to do more stuff like that. Or I posted that Tuesday tip up on whatever it was on social media, and I got six likes instead of one on the first ones. You know what I mean? Well, gosh, you got to you know, find your strengths. Man, that's 600% better. So I'm going to concentrate on something like that. But just get started. That repetition that I mentioned earlier, build your reputation. Be consistent. That consistency leads to conversion. And so it's really just starting with your iPhone. Don't get caught up in spending a ton of money on this. Use your iPhone. Use Zoom, whatever it is, but just start shooting videos. Literally, you could use your iPhone or you could just go on Zoom, set up a meeting for yourself and say, today's Tuesday tip is, and just record your screen and press end when you get done and upload that you know, download that onto your laptop, upload it into Facebook, and you've got your first Tuesday tip. It's that simple. Don't overcomplicate it because typically when we do that, we get frozen. We don't do anything. Yeah, Veronica did ask if we put together a kind of a one page or kind of some of the tips we've covered today. And I'll be happy to do that. Actually, if you register register for this uh, webinar at Eventbrite, we can communicate that to you. I don't, I don't mind kind of recapping. And for the fact, if you want to go back and watch this again, which I think most people will, will want to do, you're going to find this uh, webinar on all our social media platform, which is OBDC Memphis. Uh, go search for that on YouTube and Facebook, and you should be able to find uh, Jimmy's webinar as a replay. Taylor, I feel like I've done a ton of talking, like I'm worn out. Um, I feel like my head, I, like I'm, I'm starting to beat up, like I'm sweating. I mean, I'm leaking up here. So I hope I didn't go too fast, but um, listen, everybody can reach out to me too if they have additional questions. Um, I, I would say right now as a business community, we're all in this together. I mean, obviously you've got a great resource in Taylor. If there's any questions I can answer for anybody, um, Taylor, you know, you can always forward them to me. I'll be glad to help any way I can as well. Absolutely. We do have a few, a few extra minutes. If anybody wants to type another question in the search, we'll be happy to ans answer those questions. Um, absolutely. And again, you know, I, I think, you know, when you, as you talked about, Jimmy, when you, when you start this process of doing videos, it can be overwhelming and all the apps and things that you can get into. So I would you know, encourage everybody just to keep it, keep it simple. Like he said, 
tip of the week, just get comfortable with doing it. And a lot of people will experience, you know, very little, very little feedback and traffic as they get started. But as they go over time, this thing builds. Uh, as you as you put more videos out there on YouTube, YouTube does eventually get behind you and help you with that organic traffic. And so don't get discouraged when you start this process. It's a it's a journey. Uh, it's it's a walk. And uh, but I think it's 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 well worth it. Right, Jimmy. Absolutely. And Taylor, I would say this, too. If you're here and you're not sure, you know, and you, you're like, listen, I don't have time to learn all this. Um, I don't know if this is what they do. But speaking of, we're all better together. Um, I know that when we first came on, um, Window View Agency um, said they do media content. Um, that might be a great resource locally if you're looking for something to help you prime the pump or get started. Or, um, you know, a lot of people just need something to somebody to help them get started. There's a ton of those opportunities out there finding people that will help you set up your social media, help you set up your YouTube channel. If that's something you're looking for, I would say, I would say there's probably somebody in your community already, Taylor, that does that. Absolutely. We do have a question about the green screen. Is it necessary to use green screen or, or not? Um, you know, if you, if you want to, um, I will say this, the best response we've gotten is natural backgrounds. When we can catch a little bit of an overcast day for us and there's no wind, it's the ideal lighting. And we've got trees moving around in the background, like I can see, you know, the trees and, and Taylor's window behind him moving around. Um, natural has been best for us, but we've done a bunch. We've done some. We did a bunch of them um, that were green screen. The, the critical thing is, is, you know, is make sure it looks as real as possible. But again, let's go back to um, in reality, it's more about the content. Uh, and if you're providing good content, um, the background will enhance that. It'll help them click it. Um, but I, I didn't start out with that for sure. Um, green screen was, was tremendous for us because we got some killer beaches down here. So like we just set a camera up and it, we just ran it where it had the waves breaking behind, you know, and all that. And we did a ton of green screen videos like that. Um, but that's been a little while and those, you know, those, those look great, but man, sometimes you can do that. Like with me, super hard. Cause like my head, I'll just start like having this green glow on it. Um, if it's not done correctly. And so I think it's just, um, I'm thinking everybody doesn't have the problems I have though. So. Yeah, keep it simple if you can. I mean, that's uh, like I said, it is it is a learning curve to start video, but I think it's well worth it. It'd be well worth it for your business. And again, Jimmy, I just want to thank you for coming on uh, to the Office of Business Diversity and Compliance, sharing this information with us. I think it's been extremely helpful and very valuable. And I think everybody's kind of saying the same thing at, at the moment. It's great information, very helpful, and they're looking forward to getting started uh, with video. And so. Again, I just want to personally thank you for sharing that information and sharing your experiences as well. Because, you know, we we like I said, we all we all need to help each other if we can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just want to thank you for for doing that. Absolutely. Uh, and, and again, uh, thanks for joining us again at the Office of Business University, our virtual webinar series. We've got some great webinars coming up uh, at the end of this month. In June, uh, you know, that's our annual uh, We Mean Business Symposium, which will be virtual this year. It's on June 23rd, 24th. We'd love for you to, to join us for that. Uh, it's two days this year, and we've got some great speakers lined up for that as well. We're also going to cover uh, with Don Farrell next year about hiring and retaining employees. We all know that the, the great resignation and the great shift in employment is on. People will be leaving and joining new new places. And so how do you hire and keep the best people? We're going to kind of cover that topic uh, next month as well. So again, stay tuned to OBDC. And again, thanks for joining us once again here with Jimmy. And Jimmy, thanks a lot. This has been excellent. Great. Appreciate it, Taylor. You bet. And we'll see you soon for our next uh, amazing webinar. Talk to you later. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>